everyone. It's your best love storyteller, myself, preacher, the storyteller. But today, I am not going to be preacher, the storyteller. No, today I won't be telling you stories. Today, I am preacher, the beekeeper. That's right. Today, I am blessed enough to be beekeeping with Sandra Palmer. That's right. I'm going to be shaking a tail feather with the queen of bees. I'm going to be making some honey. I'm going to be learning about all things bees. Am I nervous? A little bit. Am I excited? Yes. Do I know what to expect? No. So stay tuned. We're about to get busy. Hello, everybody. And welcome to the farm. Farmer Palmer's Farm. So as you can see, I am here with the lovely queen of bees, Sandra Palmer. And as you can see, she's holding my beekeeping suit because I need to be ready. So I guess first things first, I need to get my shoes off, get the wellies on and then we've got the suit on. I think maybe the suit first, then the wellies will be easier. And that is why you're the queen of bees. Uh, suit first, boots next. So one um, leg, two leg. Perfect. So how long have you been um, beekeeping for? Well, it started in 2019 when a local beekeeper said, could I put some bees on your land? And we said, yes. Yep. And then he said, do you want to put a suit on and come with me? I was a bit like, oh, do I? Do I? I don't know. So I put the spare suit on looked inside at the busy bees and my whole world went calm. Wow. And it's become from there. So since 2019, you've been beekeeping? Well, I haven't had my own until about the last two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, that's it's amazing. amazing. And I joined East Dorset Beekeeping Association and they put me through the training and then they've supported me and been a huge help with all the questions. You ask a beekeeper a question, you probably get five answers. Oh, Everyone's wow. got their own version. Oh, amazing. Right. Cool. So, well, well next. East. How does that feel? Fantastic. Look, it's a perfect fit Ooh. for you. Come on over. Woohoo! When you're in. Look at that. And I'm going to zip you up around the right around the front. You don't want to leave any little bee spaces for the little monkeys to decide. Because if there's a hole, they'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a hole, they'll find it. There's a hole, there's a hole. <laughs> okay. Not uh, nervous, are you? <laughs> no, no. I just want to make sure all the holes are covered. Hey, keep all your holes covered up. <laughs> Marvellous. And if you just put those through your thumb. Okay. That stops your sleeves riding up when uh -huh. you've got your gloves on. Awesome. I'm ready. Wow, you look amazing. <laughs> so as you can see, guys, I'm gloving up because once again, I must be ready to be a beekeeper. Protection first. The doctor will see you now. <laughs> A bit nervous when my nose started itching because then I started to think to myself oh no my nose is itching and what happens if I got to scratch my nose and I can't scratch my nose and then what happens if I lift up my top to scratch my nose and then one of the bee gets inside and then stings me while I'm scratching my nose I started to have irrational thoughts and then I thought to myself preacher calm down stop telling yourself an irrational story today you are a beekeeper and the only story you need to understand is when the bees are flying around you, as Queen Bee has told me, I am safe. I just need to remember I am wearing a suit. But if a bee does get inside, <laughs> you all will see me. <laughs> so while we're behind the hive, yeah. while we're behind the hive, the bee's journey is out the front got there. here is a roof. Yep. We've got a super that had a little bit of food in, so I'm going to take that out. They had the last little bit. Yep. I've got a crown board, which is sort of like their ceiling of oh. the house. They have a super there, which they're putting food in, I hope. This is called a queen excluder for the very reason that the queen should be living in here. Oh. 
and I don't want her going up and laying eggs. If she was to get to this section yep. and lay eggs everywhere, what would that mean for the hive? So the hive's great, it means they're going really strong and they're expanding yeah. in their numbers. But when you come to take off one of these supers for honey, yeah. which is what you'd normally do, you leave one so they've got one for winter, definitely. Okay. But if she's laid eggs in it, you can't extract it for honey. Makes sense. Because it's gonna have babies it in is. it and you wouldn't do that. Yeah. So so first thing I'm going to do is go and grab my smoker and put a little bit of smoke at the end. What's the smoker for? Smoker in the wild. Oh they would think that's a forest fire. And they will start eating some of the honey. And by eating some of the honey, they're filling their tummies and they're busy. And they're oh. not paying attention as much to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first time lifting your suit a little bit, yeah. it is really a deep breath moment. It's fine, they can't get in. Okay. So mind over matter. Cool. And if you're comfortable with that, from that point on you can become a beekeeper later because that's sometimes the most unusual thing for most people. So it's called a hive tool. Okay. And I use it to start breaking open the hive a little bit. Oh, wowzy. So that's an old, older feeder from a week or so ago. Yeah. There's a tiny bit left in it. So I've just left it like that. But today I need to take that away from them because there's nothing else for them to clear up. Okay. And they were a smaller swarm. Yeah. We call it a swarm when they half the hive fly away. It's a natural way of wow. reproducing. I'm just going to put that to one side. This is so cool. So they cool. can go back to the entrance if they want to. The aim is never to hurt a bee. Yeah. But sometimes, a bit like sheep, you will have the odd kamikaze one that decides to do okay, its own thing. at this, that tells me that they may, when we look inside, if they're on all of the frames, yeah. that sometimes means that they don't think they've got a frame. Oh, okay. In which case, I can give them another one of these. In August, for example, oh, when wasps are giving them a really hard time and trying to steal their food, yeah. and they're trying to protect their winter stores, they might be a bit more defensive. Okay. If you see a swarm out on a tree or flying in the sky, they've usually got full tummies of honey. Oh, okay. So they are at their least defensive because they haven't got a home to defend yet. Yeah. And that's the frame we would put in normally. It's drawn with wax already in little hexagons. Yeah. And then they'll build their wax on top of that. Oh. And I even had to go back to woodworking to learn how to put a frame together. Oh, so you made this? Yeah. That's so amazing. And that little hole there is a little communication channel that they make to go through from one to another. Put that there. Now I've got room to open up everything a little bit. Yeah. How this long? is what you're looking for. Oh, whoa. Whoa. And if you weren't so safely wrapped up in a bee suit, you can taste the honey. So they will cover that honey in yeah. that white capping. Yep. And then they'll use that for winter. But if, they, if hives have enough, that's what we take off. Take the capping off and we process it as pure honey. Oh. They're drawing it out. It's glistening in the sun. Each bee in its lifetime will make half a teaspoon of honey. Half a teaspoon? That's all. In their, how long do um, bees... The harder they work, the shorter their lives, but usually around six weeks. What? Yeah. Bees live for six weeks, depending on how busy they are. So they come out of the, um, they hatch, they suddenly, they straight away become nurse bees yep. and look after the other bees. And then they'll become like teenagers and they produce the wax to make this from glands under their tongue. It takes a lot of honey and a lot of energy to actually make that wax. And then when they've done that job, they get to be guard bees or they go out as foragers and go and collect all the honey. So you have to be a grown-up to go collecting honey. Oh, wow. And they basically keep collecting honey until, oh, until they're exhausted.